Welcome to the Metal Voice. Oh my lord, we have an all-star pod, a podcast all-star team here today. Friends from all across, Chris Aiken. Uh, you've got so many podcasts, Chris. Just just name them. Just, just go through them. Well, thanks for having me, first of all. And of course, I have the classic metal show. Um, I have Chris Aiken Presents, I have the Seth Williams show. I'm now doing interviews for Charlie Kendall's Metal Shop. Um, yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> and Anne Erickson, please give us, you know, what you're up to and what you're doing. Yeah, well, my main podcast is Audio Inc. Radio. And so you can find it just online out of Alliance podcast. But I don't know if anyone is an NFL fan. You can find that. It's called The Squad with Anne Erickson. All right. And Ralph? Nothing. I, <laughs> I will say for years, I've been a fan of the classic metal show. Oh, there you go. It is awesome. I, I love it because they, they they have no filter. Yeah, just just like almost human. So just tell us, yeah, tell us, Ralph. Like we don't us. care. Just hey, okay, we're never gonna get so and so on our show, so let's bash them. Okay. That's right. <laughs> All right. What are we gonna talk about today? Well, the big big news is Judas Priest just released Invincible Shield, and it's a big buzz. And I thought, you know what? Just an hour ago, I thought to myself, let me get the best and the brightest minds together. That's you guys. Okay. And let's see where this new album fits in the catalog of Judas Priest. It, it could change, but as of today, sure. how do you feel about this album? How does it fit? Where does it fit? Is it one of their best or maybe is it one of their worst or maybe it's just right in the middle somewhere? So, and since it's the first time you're on the show, I'll let you begin. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very honored to be among all of you. So I'm a big Judas Priest fan, and I was so excited about this record because, you know, they're at like the stage where you're not sure if they're going to do more records and that sort of thing. But I, I really love this record. Um, I know Firepower, I felt like would be difficult to follow up because that was just such an incredible album. And I even really liked Redeemer of Souls, which I know a lot of people weren't, you know, as big a fan of that record. But I think I would put this inside the top seven of Judas Priest all-time records. Uh, I was kind of thinking about it earlier because, Jimmy, you kind of prepped us a few minutes at least. And I would put it behind, obviously, like Screaming for Vengeance or British Steel or Painkiller or Hellbent for Leather. But I mean, and I think I would put it slightly after Firepower. But other than that, I really think it's one of their strongest ones. Wow, top seven. That that that's big. So, you, like, if you just go quickly, you go. What's your number one album? Was it uh, you said Defenders? Sorry, uh, Screaming your... for Vengeance. Screaming. But they're all so close. They're like Screaming, British Steel, Painkiller, Hellbent for Leather. Like they're all really close for me. Okay. All right, Chris. Where does it sit I, with you, my friend? I love it as well. Uh, it actually ranks higher for me. I have it at number six. Wow. I went and wrote the list. Um, my list is Painkiller, Defenders of the Faith, Screaming, British Steel, Point of Entry, and then Invisible Invincible Shield. Right above uh, Sad Wings of Destiny, and then you get into you know Jugulator and Firepower and all that. And Juice Priest is a hard one, man, because pretty much 16 of the 19 records are amazing. You know, I mean, the only things that are really not, everybody will argue Nostradamus. I'll, I'll stick with that being the worst, but... That rock and roll or ram it down and turbo kind of round out the bottom. But yeah, this is nowhere near those. This this album is fantastic. I'm stunned at how good it is, to be honest. Yeah, Ralph, where'd you rank it? Well, I, I don't have the numbers here, but if any, any of your listeners want to count them up. Um, to me, the al and by the way, I do like the album. I don't mm -hmm. hate it. Though, I will say that I was a little worried with these singles they were re releasing, I wasn't liking it. Till the last one, The Serpent of the King, I loved. Then I heard the album, and I thought the album was fantastic, but still not a fan of those singles. But I would put it, uh, like, like for me, uh, Rock and Roll Defenders, that's my favorite. That's my favorite priest. Then I would say Angel Retribution, Firepower, and then this one. Up the, above the list or below the list? What above. do you mean? Above, I would put okay. it, I, and you already heard all this mountain of priest albums I love. I would put it above Painkiller. Wow, wow. That's, that's that's pretty <laughs> big, man. Wow. <laughs> if I was gonna rank this, defenders being defenders, and I guess on any given day, right? Defenders or screaming will be tied on any given day. But if I go defenders, screaming, 
and I was really struggling with this painkiller. And I know people are going to hate me for this, but demolition, you know, I put it up there. I just, I kind of, I find there's a lot of great music there. I don't know. And then I would have British steel and that's, what are we at five? And I probably at six, I would be at invincible shield because, because when you take a look at their seventies album and agree or disagree on this, there's only eight songs, right? Mm -hmm. And out of those eight songs, there's probably two songs that are so-so. So that really leaves six, where this album tends to have more than six great songs. And agree, disagree? Yeah, no, I mean, that's a really good point. I feel like one of the strengths of this record is that there's no filler. Like every single track is just is awesome. And you know what I mean? I just feel like that's definitely a strength. And I do feel like maybe when I dig back into their catalog, that's one thing that there are a few tracks on each record. I'm like, eh, I don't want to hear that one today. Chris, when you look back at the seventies, the seventies mm -hmm. albums, and, and again, you know, you have eight or seven songs. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. And you compare it to Invincible Shield. Yeah. You know, I don't know that I would even go so much back into the seventies, just as much as I would go into kind of what, what can I listen to and where do I not get bored? And this one just kind of, you know, I, I, my listening to it has just been through a playlist that just kind of cycles. And I didn't realize it. I looked right before we came in here and I only got it yesterday. So listening to it and, and not really paying attention, I listened to it like nine times, like it, <laughs> because it just kept recycling. And I didn't even realize that it was, you know, I never got bored. And that's, Kind of been the the one thing with Priest, especially the like uh, Redeemer of Souls. I can't even listen to that all the way through. It's just too long. It's too, some of those songs don't fit real well. This, I didn't get bored at all. I mean, it sounds great. Great production. Great guitar playing, which, you know, we could talk about if you want to. But I, I mean, just overall, it's just great. Totally easy to listen to. So Ralph, the production. You have the 70s production. You have the 80s production. Of course, you had that 90s grungy production, industrial production, but then you went in, we went into the Sneep era, we'll call it. How does this uh, one compare to Firepower in terms of production? With that, that is a question you shouldn't ask me, Matt. Well, I'm asking you. I, I'll, I'll tell you this, you know, just to make it quick. I am blessed, mm -hmm. totally blessed by not having an ear for production because oh, a lot man. of people complain about the drum mix too low, the vocals too high, and I'm like, Sounds good to me. So I'm not one to ask. To me, Firepower and this new album, to me, sound identical. But I don't have an ear for production, so I could be wrong. All right, all right. And, and Firepower versus this album. That's difficult because I did put them right next to each other on my favorites list. And I mean, when it comes to the production, I think that one of the reasons bands go with Andy is because... I mean, he's like so passionate about the music, right? I interviewed the guy from Saxon, you know, about um, about their new record, which Andy produced. And it just seems like he's always popping up everywhere. I think that that passion really comes through on both of the records. I mean, I kind of would give them a tie, but I would give Firepower just a small edge, probably because I've listened to it a lot more. And so, you know, you get kind of used to it and you want to hear it again and again. But um, I think they're both really strong. All right, Chris. Firepower versus uh, Invincible Shield. Love them both. Don't like Firepower as much. Again, another long record that I kind of got bored with. Now, again, took a long time before I got there, but it I did get to where it's like, all right, I'm sort of done with this record now. Um, what didn't far, you like? What didn't you like about Firepower? I didn't say that. I'm not. I have Firepower well, there, in my if top there, ten. Okay, I, all right. I just find I find it to be a little Less. long. Okay. I, you know, I just find it. You know, much like you were saying about the earlier, the earlier albums having eight, nine songs, that's kind of perfect for me. About 35, 40 minutes and I'm good. I know this new one is what, an hour, hour and five or something like that. Probably six months from now, if you ask me the same question, I'll probably tell you the same thing. I'll probably say, yeah, Invincible Shield. Yeah, it's a little long. You know, I'm I'm good for about 40 minutes, but um then it's Fire happy time. was cool. The only thing, if I'm going to pick firepower apart, which I really don't want to, but it's a little more slick than this one. This one feels a little more concert ready, I guess. Okay. And I like that more. I like kind of that when I go see it, these songs are going to kind of sound 
much closer than when I did see Firepower. The songs sounded like a kind of a, I don't know, less, they were less clean. They sounded a little different. That's all. All right, Ralph. Firepower versus this album. Well, I mean, I've only heard the song three times. You know, mm-hmm. I got it on Thursday. And I'm expecting the vinyl to get here today. Okay. Um, so it's too soon to say. I mean, if you ask me right now, I'll say Firepower. I absolutely love Firepower. But what Chris was saying earlier, how he used to love it, but now he's kind of like, eh, maybe I shouldn't play Firepower anymore and continue to love it. <laughs> Personally, I think it's Firepower Plus. I've said this many times already. And I think it has that sort of the essence of Firepower, but it just it dives more into diversity and more musical interludes. And it, it just runs away. The guitar runs away like through a whole album. And it, that's what makes it more interesting. I don't, diversity. Feel, I, I, I don't feel their songs on the new album as good as Trader's Gate or, or Flamethrower or Never Surrender. You know, those songs off Firepower, I think, are better. You know, because those are songs that the first time I heard Firepower, bam, I got it. And on this new album, I hear some great songs. I love the title track. I do love a lot of these songs, but I don't think they're as good as, you know, Traders Gate. Right. What I named off Firepower. Sure, sure, sure. All right, let's go around the room ranking this. Is everybody ready to rank this new album? And what do you give it out of 10? Oh, man, you're making us rank. Well, I did review it for Audio Inc. Radio, and I gave it a 9.5 because oh, I know. And, you know, high. I... I think part of the reason is because when a band has been around for as long as Judas Priest, I feel like it's more difficult to put out good music. Not only are they getting older, but it's just you've done so much, right? And so I was so surprised that once again, they pulled off such an incredible record. So I think that I just had to do 9.5. Oh, wow. That's that's like a classic. Chris, what'd you put it at? Uh, Probably right around there. Probably about a nine. Uh, You know, I said said on Facebook... And I, I really think this is true, and we'll see if I believe this in six months, but it's the best album a band with at least 25 years of history has put out past their 25 years you know, of anybody these, I can think these of. Are, these are very interesting points. It's one thing to put out one album and spending you know six years making that album. It's another mm-hmm. thing to put crank out a hundred and something songs and still have quality music. Correct, Chris? Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. And and I, I tried going through my mind of the older bands. And, you know, when you, when you start thinking about it, Metallica, no. Megadeth, no. Anthrax, no. You know, I, I Judas Priest, this, you know, we're, we're literally arguing if it's in their top five or not of, of a career that's 50 years long, yeah, you know, yeah. on the 50th year. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. All right, Ralph, how much would you rate it out of 10? I'll give it like a, I'll give it a nine, but if we add the bonus tracks, I'll give it an 8.5. Oh. <laughs> I don't like those. One of them's okay, but man, what is it? A lodger in that first one? Ooh. And I was like, okay, I understand why this ain't on the album. Second one's okay, but. It's a bonus. It's just a bonus. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a bonus. So not adding those, I'd give it a nine. Okay, wow, look at that all around. I would put it like at 8.7 because I don't know if I could give a nine until a year has passed. I've sat with it for that long period well, of time. Well, Jimmy, let me ask you. I don't nine. like three songs off it. That would be a nine, right? It would, it would. That's okay. That's all right. I like how specific you were, Jimmy, 8.7. <laughs> I like to be specific because <laughs> cause you, want, you don't want to say nine because you want to kind of reserve that for a year from now. So you just want to go a little bit under, right? Unless, unless Jimmy, you live on the edge like me. You do. You do. I do. Come on, Sorry, Jimmy. It's more I fun do. to say something's a nine and then to round have it off. every fan that you have come back to you and say, well, you said this was a nine too. And, you know, I, and I, now that I've given it a ranking, thanks for that, by the way, I, no I can problem. guarantee you, I will get a hundred emails from the classic metal show people yapping All about, right. well, you said this was better. <laughs> Guys, it's been a pleasure. The Metal All-Star Podcast, folks, thank you so much for being on. A pleasure. We'll do it again. Guys, have yourself a wonderful day. Thanks for having me. Thanks, man. Thank you.